For 25 years, Hail Siegel's Just One campaign has helped bring greater abilities to life for thousands of kids and adults with special needs. Please donate today. Just One. Good evening. Tonight we have something you need to see. We think you're going to be shocked by the numbers we're about to show you. We have a crisis in education, and the implications reach across all of our communities. Plus, you're paying for it. That's right, in our job, and our mission is to put the power back in your hands so you'll have the tools to make better decisions. I'm Janet Lomax. And I'm Scott Gilberry. Take a look. You're spending a lot of money, and it's all going on the taxpayers, and as taxpayers, like to know where the money's going. It's just not... A good bang for your buck anymore. I don't know what to say. That's that's not a bad. <laughs> what are they looking at? Well, here's what we showed them. New Yorkers spent fifty-eight point eight billion dollars on education, an average of over nineteen thousand five hundred dollars per student. That's the highest in the country. Our teachers also earn the highest average salary in the country at over seventy-five thousand dollars. Seems like we're putting our money in the right place. So why then do we hear this? Without this education that also brings in creativity where are we and so the frustration with all this money being spent why can't we do this why can't we i'm frustrated but not at the teachers i'm frustrated at the school system if they don't have enough money where's it going some right. people would say why do you need more money well because there are a lot of things in new york state that cost a lot we spend about statewide about 19,000 students, and the national average is about 11,000. So, if you look at our our numbers, um, our outcomes are not 80 percent better than the rest of the country. Let's take a look at those outcomes. While New York does rank at the top for spending, achievement levels are not nearly as high. Fourth and eighth grade math proficiency ranks below the national average while fourth and eighth grade reading fares slightly better. And New York's graduation rates rank below the national average at just 33rd overall. Results like these led Education Week to give New York an overall grade of B-. To be fair, the national average was only a C. you got to make sure that you compare apples to apples. And um, we got a B- minus the state. It's probably because of urban challenges like in Rochester not holding up our end of the effort. Ben White is president of the Rochester School Board, and we'll take a look at Rochester numbers in a minute. But first, what about those apples to apples comparisons? Whether it's the NAEP performance ranking, the free enterprise study, which uses data from the College Board, ACT, and SAT, Wallet Hub, which looks at math scores, reading scores, and dropout rates, or the U.S. News High School ranking. In each of these studies, New York doesn't even crack the top 10. Now, back to the Rochester numbers. Buffalo Business First has been ranking New York School District for over 20 years. Their sought-after report puts Pittsburgh as the number one upstate district. In fact, a number of our area schools are real standout success stories. But first... I want you to flip through and find me the Rochester City School District, where they rank. Turn again. Turn way back there. Okay, flip to the back. You don't see it still. Oh my gosh. Rochester ranks dead last in all of upstate New York, 432 out of 432. Glass at the bottom. They need to take care of this. <laughs> Rochester spends well over $21,000 per student with a total budget near $800 million. 28% of students drop out and only 5% are college ready. Plus, just 43% of students graduate. The worst performance of all major school districts in New York. Our money alone won't solve this problem. This way we require families, students, community. The district has to change. We are too inflexible. And if you can believe it, it gets worse. Only 9% of black males graduate and only 10% of Latino males earn a diploma in four years. How is it we can have the top rated school district in the state just minutes down the road from the absolute worst? Who's responsible? That's what all of us at News 10 NBC are working to find out. Because look what can happen when a school system can't educate our kids. Startling new numbers tonight. Rochester's poverty is worse than we may have first thought. It's true. Rochester is the most poverty-stricken city of its size. But the school board, not so much. Why do school board members in the city make as much money as you do? Salary and benefits with atrocious results. What do you think? Nearly every other school board doesn't even collect a penny. 
And if urban poverty is the problem with education, why then do we hear this? We have schools like Rochester Prep or Eugenio Maria de Hostess that have proved that urban kids can compete at a high level of education. We've proven that. Rochester Prep, a charter school in the city of Rochester, significantly outperforms the city schools in math and ELA and at about two-thirds the cost. Also, Honeyoy Falls, Lima, a public school, is a bright spot as well. One of the things I'm most proud of is our, our graduation rate for students in poverty is the highest in the state of New York. Uh, our graduation rate for students with disabilities is the highest in the region. Ann Kress, president of MCC, often sees students from poverty as well and has built programs at the community college to get those students career ready. There is data, reams of research studies that will tell you that the programs that are effective for my children are also effective for students who grow up in poverty. High school dual enrollment, early college high school. These are programs that have been in place for close to 50 years and have shown incredible success regardless of a student's gender, ethnicity, or income status. Certainly there's plenty of blame to go around for Rochester's failing schools. Some critics wonder who the teachers' union is putting first. You're only as strong as your weakest link, so why should teachers not be graded and evaluated on their weakest students? How do you justify the salaries that you see at Nyson? Keep in mind our schools are funded through local, state, and federal tax dollars. So while you're paying for the school district where you live, you're also paying for all the others as well. That's why this education crisis is costing us all as poverty breeds crime, lost businesses and jobs, public assistance programs, and the decay of our community. The level of education problems that we see in the two cities have been um, tragic to something else, where one out of every three young men is involved in the criminal justice system at, at, at any given point in time. If you can't read and you can't write, you, you're not employable. So we can fix the schools without fixing poverty. We cannot fix poverty without fixing the schools. It's impossible. So this argument that we get a pass because of the poverty statistics, it, it just doesn't hold up. These stories are too important, and all of us at Houston NBC won't let up on them. What can you do about it? The one thing we heard more than anything else, it all starts at home. Let us know what you think. Call or email us here and make your voice heard.